Hi, good morning, students. Wish you all a hearty welcome to this online classes. I welcome you all to this class 11. Hope you will have a very nice time. For this online classes, I will be dealing with literature classes. I am sure you are aware of your literature portions. We have got, same as in class 10, three books we have got. One drama, poems and short stories. Okay, now with regards to the, the pattern of questions, just uh, in brief I will just let you know. We have got 100 marks questions. Out of that you have to write just five questions. That's the only difference between class nine and uh, sorry, class nine, class ten, and then this eleven, twelve. Five questions you will write. All the five questions are of twenty marks in total. And first question it is an extract, probably like what you have got in a class ten. They have got four, five questions. Word meanings are included and short answers. Two extracts, so one getting 10 marks, you have to answer two of them. And three extracts will be given, two you have to write. That is the first question, that is a compulsory question from the drama. That question comes only from drama. And then you have to write all the five questions are of 20 marks in total. And first question, it is an extract, probably like what you have got in a class 10. They have got four, five questions, word meanings are included, and short answers. Two extracts, so one getting 10 marks, you have to answer two of them. And three extracts will be given, two you have to write. That is the first question, that is a compulsory question from the drama. That question comes only from drama. And then you have what are the four more questions. These four questions can be one from drama, from short story and poems. There are also two types of questions. One direct 20 marks questions and the other 20 marks you will get but there are three questions. Six marks questions, two types and one eight mark questions so totally 20 marks so that is optional questions you can either you can attempt 20 marks questions directly or you can answer the question which has got this division of marks so this is just basically about the question pattern of course in the 20 marks question you have to quote exact words from the textbook only then you will get good marks if you have to get 19, 20 marks for the extract. So basically you will have to quote at least 8 quotes from the textbook as it is from the textbook. Then only you will get full mark otherwise it will be considered as a flat summary. Flat summary can get only 12 to 14 marks. However good you may write you may get only 14 marks. So if you quote exactly from the textbook underline it or put in inverted comma, then you can have even 20 marks. So that is the basic condition about the question what you are going to write or the way in which you have to present your answer. That will be applicable both for poem as well as drama. All the 20 marks question if you are writing. And even the question which has got subdivisions, that 6 mark questions you may not require to write quotes, but 8 mark questions also you have to write the Quotes. So that is basically about the way in which you have to give the answer. Now we will move on to directly we will start the play. So I will be taking drama as I said. So I will be starting with drama. Which is the drama which you have to study this year. You have studied about what is called Merchant of Venice and all those things. Now we will be studying a new drama. The Tempest by William Shakespeare. 
which is the Brahma, the tempest. Now we will be dealing with what is a tempest. First you will know what is, quite many of you will know what is a tempest. Now we shall see. First before going to the drama in detail, let's see what are the different characters, the main characters of the play. May, many characters are there. We will not be dealing with all the characters just now. Some of the characters we will be seeing only as we come. Those are the minor characters. Few characters which are important. Those are good. important role I will be just dealing just now. Let us start with the first person. That is Prospero. The first name what you need to remember that is Prospero. Now who is this Prospero? Prospero is the main character or the protagonist of the play. Now you should know something more about Prospero. Who is he? Where was he? What is he going to do? Now this person Prospero was the Duke of Milan. Duke of Milan. King of one kingdom he might have heard. So in the same way Duke. Duke and his dukedom. Milan was one of the biggest or the most powerful dukedom existed at that time. And he was the Duke of Milan. That means he was the most powerful Duke of that time. Maybe now in the political power if we speak like America. America is one of the most powerful countries of the world now. In the same way Milan was one of the most powerful dukedom of that time and he was the duke of that dukedom. That means he was the most powerful duke. But he has got some good points and some negative aspects. Some of the good things we can say. He was what is called uh, well known for his goodness and knowledge of the liberal arts. Knowledge of liberal arts, literature, magical studies and so on. So in this portion we will be I will be just stressing more on his knowledge about magical powers. A person who was so much interested in magic. In fact I may have to say so much was his interest in magic that he forgot everything else. We may I may have to use the word maybe he was addicted to this one. He was addicted to his library, he was addicted to his books and so much so he spent most of his time with his books and slowly slowly he has forgotten that he was a duke. He enrolled all his activities, the administrative job enrolled to his brother. Now as we say anything in excess if we take too much anything, whatever be it, anything what we take in excess, that is negative. Now he trusted his brother so much that he entrusted all his activities, all the job that he should do. He entrusted that into the hands of his brother. And naturally, in this society, when a person is given too much power that actually does not belong, when he start with enjoying the power that slowly make him greedy and that is exactly what has happened his brother enjoying the administrative power probably that gave him an idea if I can do like this act on behalf of my brother why can't I do it by myself so slowly that greediness that crept in him and that resulted in throwing him out of his dukedom. He was thrown out of his dukedom. Of course, he was little kind enough so that he did not kill him. Just banished him from his kingdom, dukedom. He was thrown into a sea without any of the provisions that is needed for him. By the divine providence, he escaped. Now he had only just one daughter along with him. Maybe sometime we may consider it as a burden because the, he was thrown into the sea. 
and there he along with his small daughter just two or three years of age he has to protect himself he has to protect his daughter and he have to save their life from the ocean ferocious waves it was there but by the divine providence he was saved and he says it was the smile of miranda his daughter that made him that made him to serve his life long for his life now in the beginning i said probably prospero was his negative aspect was that he trusted too much but when he reached that island he began to judge people correctly he began to be very careful that critical about different people so he became very critical in judging the people so that he may not get into a problem just like what happened in the first time in this dupron therefore we see that after some time one of his enemy's son ferdinand reaches the island though he is with his magical powers he knew what the intention of ferdinand was but he trust uh, he tortures him he tests him he just want to verify whether the show of his love for his daughter was it really genuine honestly the she love his daughter so he tests him and gives him cruel punishment he was made as his slave and made to carry bundles of log the whole day he was made to carry finally he proves that his love is genuine then as i said he was interested in magical powers he with his magical powers he brings about good results now as he was on that island he realizes that all his enemies are on a ship and passing by the nearby his island and he raises a tempest now comes the tempest tempest is a very heavy storm strong wind that exists in the ocean in the sea and all those things. heavy wind he raises a wind and raises the storms and wrecks the ship and he scatters all the passengers on the ship and he tries to take vengeance on those people the people those who were on the ship were mainly alonso the king of naples not nepal naples the king of naples nearby place of milan then ferdinand his son was there gonzalo was there antonio sebastian these are all main characters so they were present on the ship and they were all brought back to his own island where he was living so that is with his magical powers he brings those people to his island then we can see in that one there is a lot of plot going around against him by caliban caliban is another maybe me may call as a minor character but caliban has got important role there he plots against prospero tries to kill him but with his magical power and with his aid ariel he spoils that then the last thing about prospero we need to see is that having the ultimate power to punish his enemies he has got the ultimate power now because he has got perfect command over everyone with his magical powers but he does not do that even though such cruelty was done to him but he does not show so much cruelty back to those people he sticks stone to forgiveness he believes in forgiveness the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance he believes in what is called the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance forgiveness is greater than vengeance revenge so therefore he does not take revenge and he makes everyone to uh, reconcile for their sins the crimes they have committed and converts them into normal people that is all about prospero what you need to know now we will move on to next character that is miranda miranda is the daughter of
So as I said, Miranda, the prospero. So she was along with him on that island. So now who is Miranda? A young, beautiful girl. You know the description of beautiful persons, even in the story Merchant of Venice, you have studied. He uses somewhat the, exactly the same way in which uh, he describes Portia. As such a beautiful girl that the moment you see that automatically you fall in, with, fall in love with that person. And exactly that is what happens when Ferdinand reaches the island. He sees her and he wonders actually who she is. He assumes that she is the goddess of that island. So much so was the beauty, gentleness, the sincerity, honesty of that person. But he believes that she is the goddess of that island. And naturally, he falls in love with her. And most of the things we have to see, what happens there, he falls in love, but father does not agree to their love story. And therefore, a lot of problem goes on there. Even after some time when her father comes there, uh, her father, no, his uh, Ferdinand's father reaches there, he also believes the same story and he believes that is she the goddess that has served us and brought us together. They have been brought by and finally then he and there he sees her and he assumes that this must be the goddess of this island that has brought them together. Now another thing we have to think about Miranda is that she is totally brought up on that island. When she was hardly two or three years of age, she has been thrown out of her dukedom and has been brought up on that particular island on which there are only just two human beings existing, she and her father. She has not seen any other human being except her father. So naturally what she has learned, what she has acquired only from her father and her father does not teach her child anything what is not virtuous. And therefore she is a virtuous girl. She is a girl who has got only honesty, sincerity, genuineness in her nature and compassion for others. Her compassion for others is very clearly depicted in the Act 1, Scene 2 where she is described, where she is introduced there. There it is mentioned that the cries of the passengers did knock against my very heart. The cries of the passengers, the cries of the passengers who are on the ship. Now Prospero knows very well who are the passengers on the ship. He knows that they are all his enemies. But she does not believe in any of those things. She says, my heart is pain. The cries of those people are knocking on my heart. They are pleading with me to save them. And she demands her father, Father, if it is by your magical powers that you have raised the tempest, please subside that one. Then Miranda is another person, let us say, she is free from the hypocrisy and deceit. No cheating. That kind of attitude, probably we may have to say in just different from our society. What is the condition of our society now? Can we trust anybody? Be it anyone. Somewhat, I may have to say, it is impossible for us to believe another person. We don't know what time that person is going to deceive us. Because at present what we are noticing is that everyone is worried about only myself. Whatever I want, if I get, I am happy not worried about any other. So this was not in her. She was not affected by the, what you call the sophisticated nature of civilization and all those things. The sophistication of the civilized world, she was not aware of that one because she has not seen any of those things. So naturally, she was free from any of those things. Then we speak about her smile. She has got beautiful smile. She was looking like a cherubim. Cherubim means what? Angel. It was her smile that 
made him survive. We will see that one example in the test in which in one place she asked, am I or uh, was I a real trouble for you? Because no mother, nothing is there. So you have been carrying me there or not now. So she says, he says, no, it was only because of your smile that today I am surviving. And finally we see she falls in love with Ferdinand. Son of the person with whose help he has been thrown out of his dukedom. That is a tragic thing there we are seeing. Then I will move on to what is called uh, next character that is Caliban. Caliban is one of the creatures, I may use the word creatures that exist around that island. Son of a witch. His mother was a very evil witch that existed on that island or she has been thrown out of her original place Algiers from there because of her evil nature she has been banished from that place to this island and where Caliban was born and he is a deformed creature we can't call him as a human being we can't call him as a fish so half fish and half human being he is a monster and the embodiment of evil we say. He is full of evil. There is no goodness at all anywhere in him. And a person or a creature that can never be taught. He does not understand anything. The ways of gentleness, politeness, kindness, none of those things will serve him. He, he, he can be taught only by torture, physical torture, that is the only thing that he learns from. And finally we see, he plots against his own master. That is all about Caliban. Caliban, embodiment of evil. And something we may have to, and we say that master tries a lot to teach him something. And the advantage is that finally one statement we say, you taught me your language and therefore I can curse you. That is the thing what we say. You taught me your language, therefore I can curse you in your own language. You can see the extreme level of his cruelty. And another one good thing if you speak about that is he is fully aware of that island. He has got full knowledge of that island. What all things are existing, where and all those things, where the pure water is, the clean water for drinking, where what fishes can be got, where you can get uh, birds for hunting, all those things he has got full knowledge about that one. Alright, that is something about Caliban. Then I will move on to Ariel. Now why I have taken is, this is uh, four persons that exist around that island. Maybe in the chapter you may see different way in which these characters are described. Now here, Ariel. Ariel is, as the name implies, it is an airy creature that exists in the air. Or this Ariel is an invisible creature. It can, it is invisible only to Prospero. Prospero by his magical powers makes him invisible, only to him visible and all others it is invisible. It moves around in the air, it can travel in the water, it can travel in the fire, anywhere it can be present. No one will be aware of its presence. Now speaking about Ariel, Ariel was a spirit living on that island when Sikorax, mother of Caliban, reached that island. Now she, as I said, she was such an evil witch. She practices a lot of evil things. but. Ariel was not willing to do some of the evil orders given by Sikorax. Therefore, Sikorax imprisoned him on a tree. A pine tree. You can Im imagine the condition. Imagine that a pine tree has been just split, separated like this and you are kept inside there. Head that side, rest of the body this side and left that. You can imagine the pain and Ariel has been imprisoned on a split pine tree for 12 years. You can imagine not one or two days, it is for 12 years in that painful condition. And it is said that he has been crying and wailing in such a way that even the cruel animal felt 
pity for that. So much was his cry. Then Ariel has been freed by, freed means just freed from the tree and made a slave of Prospero by his magical rule. Because during that 12 years time, Sikorax also died. So because of that one, nobody could free him from the tree. She could imprison him to the tree, but she was also not able to free him from the tree. So he was trapped there. And Ariel is a very faithful friend of Prospero. He informs him everything about all that is happening on that island. So anybody comes there, Prospero, immediately he gives the idea to Prospero. So anybody plans against Prospero, that is already informed. So he was a faithful friend of Prospero. But every now and then he demands that, uh, not every now and then, two, three instances are there in which he reminds Prospero that I need to be freed. I have been such a faithful friend for you. I have carried out all your tasks for you. And you see, sometimes he scolds him, sometimes very friendly. He says, you are a very good person. You are my brave spirit. I will free you two days before. All those things, it can be seen. So there was a mutual understanding between these two people. He is a very gentle creature, very simple, tender-hearted creature. We can say a playful nature is shown by the manner in which he does his duties, which enables him to use his powers on Stefano and Pringolo. Stefano and Pringolo are other two minor characters that happen to reach on that island, two drunkards, totally drunk, 24 hours. You see some of the promises what they make. We shall not drink anything except wine. We shall not drink a drop of water till the drum of wine gets over. And the next one is, so now these four are the characters that exist around the islands. Of course I told you in the beginning that she has seen, uh, Miranda has seen only two human beings. There are only two human beings, that is she and her father. Ariel is a spirit and uh, Caliban is a monster. Now we will move from there to, back to the country, Milan. Now there are a few serious characters, one is Alonso. Antonio, Sebastian and Gonzalo. Now let us see who are these people. Alonso is a villain. One of the villains we may have to say. But before that, Alonso was king of Naples. So he was a king as well. So king of Naples, a very prominent figure. And even there you have to see that Alonso's desire was to capture Milan. That was not possible so long as Prospero was there. So the moment he got the chance, he took over. So with the help of uh, uh, Alonso is not as wicked as Antonio and Sebastian. These are the real villains of that with no sense of kindness, gentleness, any of those things. Like some of the villains, cruel villains what we see in uh, <coughs> Hindi movies and all those things. Maybe there are some the real villains. Every time they show their villainous nature. So, Alonso is not so much villain. Though he made some mistakes and all those things, afterwards we see that this person repented for his sins. He feels sorry that I have done such a mistake. So that repentance make him somewhat a better person. He loves his son and we see how much he cries for his son when his son is lost. Lost in the water and he was not able to find him. So there he feels sorry for all those things and that we see. So somewhat a better person we see. He lost his son, he lost his daughter and all those things. So many problems that he faces and we see his tender nature we see. Then moving on to the next character that is his son Ferdinand. Ferdinand we have to see that he reaches onto the island, he meets Miranda there and falls in love. Then one subplot takes place there. The love story between Miranda and uh, Ferdinand is another subplot what we are seeing there. The torture what he has to undergo because of his love for his, uh, this Miranda, Prospero punishes him. So that is another subplot and we see him there. 
He is the perfect romantic hero of Shakespeare. He is a very gentleman and that is expressed very clearly. And even the promises what he makes or the uh, when he is punished and put inside the prison, he says, at least grant me a chance to meet my fiancé at least once a day. That will give me everything. The entire world if I shut in front of me, but I am given a chance to see her. That's enough for me. So all that things we see. Then moving on to next character that is Gonzalo. Gonzalo is a counselor, old counselor. And the main point what we need to see is his honesty. So he is a very genuine counselor, sympathetic nature and loyal to the king. He is very loyal to his king. And it is, we may have to say, it is just because of Gonzalo that Prospero is surviving today. He was also, he was the main person who was plotting against Gonzalo and all those things, uh, Prospero, and he was given the duty of arranging the ship. So when he was given the duty, he made sure that all the essential things, just like drinking water, uh, clothes, food, linens, and all those things, he arranged in the ship. With the advent, Prospero and his daughter survives and reaches to the island. So he is very sincere person. And we see in the beginning of the ship, beginning of the scene when the shipwreck takes place, he is very cool. He takes, uh, he believes that the person who is in charge of the ship, he will make sure that he believes that so long as this person is there. But he speaks in very humorous manner there. Then Antonio and Sebastian, together I will speak this Antonio and Sebastian. Antonio is the brother of Prospero, the most cruel person. Sebastian is the brother of Alonso. So one is Duke's brother, another one is King's brother. Both are real wicked people. Both of them are totally greed for power. They need nothing but take away the power from the uh, rulers. Be it their, their own brothers, they don't care. Maybe even in the political situations existing in different countries we see. When it is a question of power and money and all those things, they just forget even there is no relationship. There is no blood relationship. There is no father and son relationship. There is no brother and sister relationship. Nothing exists there. Power, ultimate greed for power, that is actually existing here also. Both of them even ready to kill their own brothers. One thrown alive, he and his, his brother and his brother's child into the open sea. And he was put into a ship, we can call it that one. We can't even call it as a ship. This uh, carcasses of boat we call it. And the body of boat. It is said that even the rat ran away from there because just because it knew that this boat is not suitable to survive. There he places his brother to die in the water. And the other one, Sebastian, his brother, they nearly killed his brother. But somehow, with the magical powers, they have been saved. So these two wicked persons and the rest of the people, Alonso is there in their group, but they, he is not that wicked person. These are some of the main characters what we need to study in there. I hope the main characters are clear. So as I said, it is Prospero, the protagonist, his daughter Miranda, he, uh, her lover Ferdinand, the son of Alonso, the king of Naples. So Alonso is the king of Naples and his brother Sebastian, Antonio, brother of Prospero, who has thrown him out of his dukedom. So these are basically the main characters there. Then you will see some of the more spirits will be coming there, monsters will be coming there, psychorax will be coming there, then Ariel and Caliban, of course they are there, then Stefano, Tringlo, two drunkards are there. So these are mainly the characters there. Now just at random we will just move to, let's say, the plot. Just what the story is going to be. 
we need to see that there are there is one main plot just in gist only I will be speaking the main plot consists of Prospero is thrown out of his dukedom by his brother Antonio and the help of Alonso the king of Naples and rest of the things Prospero by chance by the divine providence Prospero manages to reach one island on that island he learns his magical powers he perfected and he is so strong in magical powers he draws the people those who are traveling by the sea onto this island he tries to take revenge make the shipwreck and the rest of the things everything follows there that is the main plot Prospero trying to take revenge on those people who has taken uh, taken away his dukedom and who has destroyed him, who, who has thrown him out of that dukedom. So he brings all those people to the island where he is living. Scatters everybody, make them experience the same pain as losing their own dear ones. Then under that one we have got there are two more subplots or rather say three more subplots are there three subplots are there one is about Caliban Caliban as I said is a very cruel person a monster actually as he claims he is the owner of that island because he was born and brought up on that island and no one else existed on that island only Caliban existed on that island so Caliban claims that he is the owner of that island so he plots against Prospero I said about two drunkards, I said Stefano and Tringlo. They, because of the shipwreck, they managed to reach and they uh, land up in front of this Caliban. Caliban takes them as some divine people. And the drink what they are taking as some divine liquor. So a holy drink. He also drinks and totally they become drunk and they plot against their, uh, his master Prospero. But Ariel spoils all those things. So that is one subplot. The second subplot is the love story between Ferdinand and Miranda. The entire thing, the uh, falling in love at first sight, then Prospero interferes between these two, puts a blockade there because Prospero believes that anything that is gained easily is forgotten easily. So he creates trouble and that is one subplot there, second subplot that order whatever you can take it. So sec, uh, one subplot is that. First one is Caliban's plot against uh, Prospero. Second one is Ferdinand's love story, Ferdinand and Miranda. Third one we may have to call what is called the conspiracy of Sebastian and Antonio. The conspiracy to kill Prospero. Sebastian and Sebastian, his brother, sorry, it is uh, Alonso's brother, Antonio, Prospero's brother, when they are on that island, they see Alonso sleeping. They plan so that they can kill Alonso and take away the kingdom. And that planning and all those things, that is another subplot. So this is all about the plot about the plane. So then we may have to move to the next topic before that one plot is clear I hope main plot the story of Prospero how he uh, how he was ruling the dukedom and how he was thrown out of that kingdom dukedom and how he reaches the island and from there how does he bring all those his enemies to that place and how he tries to take revenge on them finally forgiveness and all those things that is the main plot subplots we said about Caliban's interview, then the plot of Antonio and Sebastian against the life of Alonso, then Ferdinand's and Miranda's love story. That is plot. Then we we'll just at random we'll see the theme of that one. Theme only in just in just I will be speaking. The first one is the pursuit of power. Pursuit of power that we see everywhere in political fear also we see as somewhat it is an addiction that gets into the people once they enjoy the power of ruling others they will never leave and they are willing to go to any extent to grab that power 
If they have to kill so many people, if they don't care. So the pursuit of power, and you will have to see all what those things they have done in order to get the power. So many people we will see. Starting from Antonio, taking away the power from Prospero, then you will see Kaliban trying to take this power, then we will see Sebastian and all those things together, they try to kill Alonso for that one, take, take away the power. So all those supernatural powers are there, given there. So all those things you may have to see. The second theme what is existing in the play is the sin, atonement and reconciliation. The sin, the committed by different people in that play, trying to kill people and all those things. So that is another important thing. Sin, atonement and reconciliation. A reconciliation is there. Finally, you will see that they bring back some sort of remorse. Two of them, they have no sense of remorse. Antonio and Sebastian, they have no sense of reconciliation. But this person, Alonso, he feels sorry for the mistake which he has done. And another one thing what we see existing throughout the play is that Illusion versus reality, or same as what we said, appearance versus reality. What is seen in reality and what is actually happening, these are two different things. So many instances we see, there is a big difference between appearance and reality. The first instance is that we see, we see the shipwreck. In appearance we see the ship is totally damaged, totally destroyed. But we see, just before their journey, the ship is there, intact, as if nothing has happened. This, all these people, all the people on the board was thrown out of the ship. But they see, but reaches the land, not even a mark on their shirt is noticed. Not even a small dust particle is found in their dress. And in fact, they say, it looks as if slightly better than what they, when they have worn this dress. So what has happened and what is happening now? That is altogether a different situation. So that is what we see. Uh, what is called about uh, appearance versus reality. Sebastian and Antonio, what they do there, show that they are loyal to their king. But the moment when the person is sleeping, they are willing to kill. So that is one thing is appearance and other thing is the reality. So a lot of points you will be noticing that. Of course you will have to go through this first part before the drama begins. You have to understand the plot completely, you have to read. Then you have to read through the theme, what exists, existing. These are portions we can get questions for the exams. So please go through these things and you will understand the play better. So we today we spoke about the most important characters of the play the protagonist, the Prospero, then later on with the various people, various characters, villains, heroes, gentle, <coughs> gentlemen, all these people we have seen, then we separate about the plot, plot we have to see that one, it has got one main plot and three subplots are there, because these subplots are very important for us in terms of exams. These questions will be asked there. So all these things you have to see that we spoke about uh, the theme. Theme of appearance versus reality. That was the last one what we said. Then sin, atonement and reconciliation. Then we said about the pursuit of power. So these are all the just introductory part that you need to know. I hope it is clear. In the next class we will start with the play, first act, first scene we will be seeing. So it will be better that if you can go through this play once so that you will get to know what are the, some of the important things and all those things, some of the words, some of the real uh, tough words will be there.
some of the words which Shakespeare uses here, he has got precise reason is there. So you can just go through glance over that one. At least go through the themes and all the things what we have studied today. Okay? Have a nice time. Enjoy the classes. Probably as I, as you noticed that I am teaching you for the first time majority of the students, especially literature for everybody. So hope that you will have a nice time. Have a nice day.